My name's Gary Rose, and I have been working on this ranch horse logging for about four months. And I'm just trying to give you an overview of what it entails. This is an example of what the forest looked like before working in it. As you can see, looking around, is just an incredible amount of fuels on the ground. These trees, I think, are about 75 years old. They're so stunted, they're so small that they just don't have any way to grow because they're so close together. So here's an example of trees that are growing too close together. You can look up at their crowns, they're all touching, and it just stunts their growth and creates a fuel hazard. For example, the Paradise Fire is just a disaster because um, of poor fuel management and homes too close to uh, the forest and no defensible space around the homes. Um, you'd shoot for a spacing of the trees to open up the crowns, allow the trees to grow, and allow the fuels to get on the ground so the if there were a fire, to burn on the ground rather than in the air. Our goal in this ranch forest is to open up the stand of trees to allow them to grow. Like I said earlier, these trees are 75 years old and they just are too thick and a huge fire hazard. So by using horses, we can thin the forest out more efficiently by saving the little trees and not damaging the ones that are left. And when we do so, Spacing the trees out 15, 20 feet apart, it gives them room to grow and creates way less of a fire danger by getting the fuels on the ground. We're walking through an area I've already done, finished thinning out, and you can see the difference. Yes, there's debris on the ground, but it's on the ground. So if you look up at these trees, you can see how they're spaced out evenly and not touching allow for a lot more growth and decrease the fire danger. If you wanted to pay somebody to come in here and clean up the slash, you could, but it's very costly and time consuming. So therefore, it's left on the ground. And over time, it creates nutrients, keeps the roots moister, and builds a layer of duff to allow the trees to grow better and faster. So I want to take a moment and talk about tree growth. This tree is 14 inches in diameter. And from this point here is where the tree started growing. Out to here is 65 years. And at that point, there were some trees removed and the growth exploded for six or seven years and the forest started to close in again. Regardless of the forest closing in, in 26 years, this tree doubled its size from this point to this point, adding seven and a quarter inches to its growth. So thinning the forest is definitely an asset to the growth of trees. So on this job here, it's a win-win situation for the landowner and myself due to the fact that the trees have value and they are paying my income and he is making a profit off the trees. In return for that, the landowner is getting a decreased fire danger, a healthier stand of trees by promoting the growth, by thinning them out, and an extremely environmentally sound way of removing the trees using horses with such little impact on the ground, leaving so many little trees left versus equipment. If, as you can see right here, I was in here two months ago and minimal damage to the soils with leaves and, and duff and needles and debris recovering already after two months. I've been through forest I've thinned 25 years ago and you can't even see I was in there when I used horses. A big stand of trees just like this closed canopy old growth forest.
So one of the things to decide before you start a job like this, what trees to cut. I, I go with, I work with the landowner and walk them through it to decide what trees to cut. In particular stands of trees, the stands vary. So in certain areas, there were 20 to 30 inch trees. In that case, I space the trees out accordingly to allow the crowns to be apart from each other and letting more light in and decreasing the fuel danger. In this particular area, the trees were uh, 10 to 14 inches with a lot of little trees um, amongst those trees. So I took the 10 to 14 inch trees and then uh, left the little trees to grow. And they will grow and increase in growth every year due to the fact they're getting more light. In all reality, you are taking a value off your property, but you're also releasing these trees, smaller trees, to grow, which will increase in, over time and create value. Well, I brought the team of horses up here uh, for other logs, and you can see how minimal impact it's created on the soils. And this is the next tree I'm going to cut right here, and I'm going to throw it along the trail, and then I'll cut it up into sections or lengths that the mill wants. So one of the things I've agreed with this landowner to do was to the stuff left out in the woods to get it down, called lopping the tops. Get it down closer to the ground so it rots quicker. And it does help. I can't get it all, but it just if you get the limbs down close to the ground, they get compacted and uh, rots quicker to the ground. This particular tree, when I'm using horses, I cut it according to what they can pull in the terrain and where it lands and how I think they can get it out. In this case, the mill wants three particular log lengths. So if I would have given the longer log length, there's no way these horses could have pulled that out. So I decide as I'm cutting the appropriate lengths to cut it what the mill wants. So I cut it right here to allow the horses to come in back up to it and pull it out the trail. With a machine, you just go ahead and cut the lengths, mow the trees over, push them over, and um, go on with your business. But it, it takes a lot more finesse with horses, by, but by using the finesse, you get a much cleaner, better job done with less damage to the trees, the ground, and the environment. So this is uh, Tonka and Mato. And these are the stars right here. These guys are working horses. And they're brothers, and they're born and raised on an Amish farm. And they can definitely work. And they can definitely eat, too. So I'm going to harness them up and get them ready to go to work. They'll eat as much as you give them. This is their favorite treat. But this guy weighs 1,600 pounds, and Tonka, the older brother, weighs 1,300. Not big, but big enough to work. And this is the older brother, Tonka. He, if I'm not, he probably trained Mato, which is probably three or four years younger, how to pull and work. And there's always a dominant horse in the pack, and Tonka's the dominant horse because he's in charge. So this is a horse collar. This is where all the weight is distributed. So the hames and the harness fit right here. And so they're actually pulling with this. It's filled with hay and horse hair and compacted and designed to fit the horse. So there's room right here for them to breathe as they're pulling. So this is literally the harness I used 30 years ago. I got it from 
the son of the gentleman I used to work for, he kept it and I picked it up last year. So this does have some history. It's logging harness, it's not, it's very simple, very light. It's like when they put this on, they become like they're in the military. Just like that. They don't know what to do. So you're literally driving them. They don't know, have a clue what you want them to do, except for by this bit. And the lines go in here. So if you pull on the line this way, it turns that way, pull on the line the other way, it turns the other way. So you literally have to drive them. This is the double tree I used 30 years ago also. It's all Amish made harness, all of it. It's called, it's not leather, it's biothane. It's way tougher, way lighter. So, and I'm gonna be turning them towards you and walking and going to work here. They feel the lines on their body. So if I want them, they'll feel, turn around. See how that horse stepped aside? Whoa, watch. This way, whoa. And I pull on the lines for him to back up. Back, back, whoa. Of course, whoa. So that's a lot of it. Them feeling the lines and what I'm doing with it. And they are, they love to predict, whoa what I want them to do. And you don't want that because that becomes unsafe. So you're always training a horse to be safe, especially out here in the woods. Come on. So if you think you might be interested in a project like this on your property, give me a call, I'll come out, give you a free consultation and see what works best for you. Thanks for your time, thank you. Come on. Oh, and by the way, I not only do the commercial thinning on larger tracts of land, I work around homes on small acreages doing fuel reduction and defensible spaces around homes, which is very critical nowadays with all the trees, people building homes in the forest. I also trim trees, take out hazard trees, remove stumps. And another thing these horses love to do is carriage rides. <laughs>